Hello and welcome to Mary Makes. I'm Mary and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this mini dino. Look at all these minis. Ah! The mini dinosaur is a beginner to intermediate crochet pattern as it will require color changes and some stitch counting. Uh, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. Uh, just remember that you can always speed up, slow down, pause, and rewind this video as you crochet this little dinosaur along with me. So I designed Mini Dino because I recently went viral on Instagram and my shop completely sold out. So I wanted to create a mini version of uh, Timothy that is faster to crochet because it has fewer stitches and uh, fewer color changes because it has, well, only five stripes, three on the body and two on the tail. Um, I went viral on Instagram for my Jumbo Timothys. Um, here is one of them. If you have any questions about how I made Jumbo Timothy, please check out my uh, Instagram. Um, there's an FAQ in my story highlights. Um, but anyways, this mini pattern is really great if you're an avid crocheter and you like to like sell at live markets or on your own online shop. Um, it works up fast. I think each one takes me maybe a little over an hour to make or so. And um, all I ask is that you please credit me with the design so that other crocheters can find this tutorial and this pattern. And then we can fill the world with all the mini dinosaurs. So this mini dino is inspired by the very popular Timothy the T-Rex pattern by Blue Phone Studios. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I make a ton of these Timothys. Um, there's a link in the description to Blue Phone Studios uh, Etsy shop where you can purchase the Timothy the T-Rex pattern. Um, I do not make any money off of promoting Blue Phone Studios pattern. It's just an awesome design. It makes such a cute dinosaur and I want to give credit to that. Um, also, because it is not my intellectual property, I will not be making a tutorial for Timothy the T-Rex. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I differentiate my mini dino from Timothy. So there we go. Okay, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, so let's see if I can get ahead of the questions. So Timothy has five stripes. If you make Timothy with jumbo yarn and a jumbo crochet hook, it's it comes out to be this two foot monster that's really soft and cuddly and, and the head jiggles. And I know y'all love the head jiggles. Using the same size yarn and the same size hook for jumbo dino, you can make a mini version that has three stripes. This is my pattern and it jiggles a little. And this one is about 14 inches tall. And then of course, if you're using regular worsted weight yarn, Timothy, five stripes, this one comes out to be eight and a half inches. And of course, same thing, mini uh, worsted weight yarn with a four millimeter hook, it's about five inches tall. So I hope that helps uh, with differentiating the different dinosaurs. Um, what I'm doing in these instances is I'm not changing the pattern. This Timothy with the five stripes has the exact same number of stitches as this Timothy with the five stripes. I'm just using a thicker yarn and a larger crochet hook to make the big one. Um, and then this mini dino and this mini dino also have the same number of stitches. I just used a four millimeter hook in this case and a 10 millimeter crochet hook in this case. So hopefully that makes sense uh, to y'all. Um, let me know if you have any questions, but I think that should do it. Okay, back to mini dino. I can't even hold all of these. So I wanted to make this pattern free and most importantly accessible. So if you're newish to crochet, this video tutorial is designed to walk you through it all step by step. If you're pretty good at crocheting, you really don't need, me, need to listen to me. The written pattern is available on my website. It's uh, linked below in the description. 
And if you want to continue seeing more of my designs and seeing these step-by-step -step tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a pattern about once a month. And if you're able to, please consider supporting my crochet pattern designing by buying me a coffee. There's a link to my coffee page in the description as well. Okay, I think that's everything. It's time to get started. Okay, so, mmm, queso. <laughs> um, mini dino is made by crocheting each part individually and then sewing them together. Um, you'll crochet the arms, the feet, and the tail and sew them to the body. The written pattern um, is going to show color changes with color coded text. Um, so you'll see that um, on the screen um, as we do this together. For your materials, you're gonna need yarn. Today I'm using Yarn B Yarn ID in Rosewater and Sand Dollar. I'm using Rosewater for the main color. I'm using Sand Dollar for these stripes. I think this will make a really cute mini dino. Um, I have two whole balls of yarn with me today, but you don't really need that much. Um, I think you only need like 20 grams of the main color and about five grams of the stripe color. And those are um, estimates on like the high side. I think it really was like 18 grams and three grams, but either way, it makes this mini dino a wonderful stash buster for getting through all of your leftover yarn. Um, this yarn is a size four medium worsted weight yarn as indicated here. It does call for a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. However, since this is amigurumi and I want my stitches to be tight so none of the stuffing comes out, I'm using a size four millimeter uh, crochet hook today. You'll also need a yarn needle to sew all of your parts together. This is just a regular uh, blunt tip stainless steel yarn needle. You'll need a pair of scissors. I've got my trusty crane scissors here. And you'll need a pair of six millimeter safety eyes. I've got my safety eyes here and their backs. Um, safety eyes are not suitable for very young children as they are a choking hazard. Um, I just want to name that risk. Um, I've never really had any issues with safety eyes popping out. I've had to like destroy the piece I've made just to get the eye out. But I just wanted to uh, name that risk um, while we're here. And of course you'll need stuffing. Uh, you can pick up all of these items at your local craft store or if you want um, in the description is my Amazon storefront. If you do make a purchase on my recommended tools there, um, I do earn a commission. I don't put any yarn on my well I guess I don't really buy yarn online because I like to go to the store and like feel the yarn and pick something happy so you're only going to see like my tools and safety eyes and stuffing on my Amazon storefront but that's all the materials you need it's time to get into the pattern okay so we're going to start with the body to start, you'll want to take your body color yarn um, and start with a magic ring. To make a magic ring, I like to hold the yarn end in my non-dominant hand and I like to make a loop over my fingers so that um, the way the yarn crosses is this is over there. And I take my yarn, uh, my crochet hook, I go into this circle, I draw on my live yarn, I pull it through the circle and I twist my hook up towards the ceiling and then I just yarn over the hook and pull it through. So that makes a magic circle. Um, then I just straighten out the tail there. This lets you uh, adjust the ring as you work in the slip knot. So for round number one, we're going to do six single crochet into the magic ring. So take your yarn in or your hook into the circle, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through. There's one single crochet, two, three, 
four, five, and six. So there's our six stitches. I'm gonna pull this tail to close the magic ring. And there's our beginning. Going on to round number two, we're going to do six increases. An increase is just two single crochets in the same stitch. So we have six stitches, we're gonna put two stitches in each stitch, which means we're gonna have 12 stitches at the end of this round. So there's my first increase here. Here's my second increase there. Third increase. Fourth. Fifth. And sixth. So there's the end of round number two. You should have 12 stitches. For round number three, we're going to work one single crochet followed by an increase, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. So here's the first single crochet, and then an increase. And then another single crochet, and another increase, all the way around. Third single crochet, third increase, fourth single crochet, fourth increase, fifth, and sixth. So there is round number three complete. You should have 18 stitches. For round number four, you're gonna do two single crochets followed by an increase and repeat that all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. So here's one, and then a second single crochet, and then in this third stitch, I'm going to do two single crochet in there for my increase. So you should, so the pattern is single crochet, single crochet, increase. Do that all the way around. All right, there is round four completed. You should have 24 uh, stitches in this round. For the next round, round number five, we're going to do three single crochet followed by an increase all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. So here's my first, second, and third single crochet, and here's that increase and you'll be repeating that pattern of single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and an increase all the way around.
Okay, so there is round number five complete. You should have 30 stitches in the round. Um, so it just occurred to me that um, y'all might not be crocheting the same way I do. I do not use a stitch marker. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my work to see where the end of the row is. So I can see here that this is the round where I did the first the six stitches in the magic ring and then I can see this is where my first stitch of the round is so because I'm looking out for this I just know that I'm at the end of a round when my stitches uh, stack up here the stitches that stack up on the first stitch of the first round that sits here that's um that's where I know I'm going to start the next round. Um, but if you are having trouble, um, go ahead and use a stitch marker or just a stray piece of yarn. I'm just kind of lazy to carry around stitch markers and to insert them and remove them constantly. Um, so going on for rounds six through nine, you're going to be doing just one single crochet in each stitch. So that's row six, seven, eight, and nine. That's four rows of one single crochet in each stitch. And I'm gonna go do that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so here is rounds uh, six through nine completed. And um, if you ever need to double check your rows, um, you can just count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And um, if you need to, use a stitch marker or run a uh, loose piece of yarn through this. Actually, that's exactly what I am going to do just to make this um, easier to see. I've just got a scrap piece of yarn here. And I'll just run that through here. So now you can see where the uh, start and uh, end of a row is. So going on to round number 10, we're going to do 11 single crochets, four decreases, and then another 11 single crochet for a total of 26 stitches in this round. So let's do the first 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I'm going to show you how to do the invisible decrease. You can do a decrease where you just go into the first loop or first stitch drop a loop, go into the second stitch, drop a loop, and yarn over and pull through all three. But I find that this looks very obviously like a decrease. So to do an invisible decrease, what you're going to do is take your hook and go through just the front loop of the next stitch, and then go through the front loop of the stitch after that, draw up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through. And so that looks a little bit more similar to the uh, regular single crochet. So that's an invisible decrease. So there's our first one. Here's our second one. Third. And fourth. And then finish up this round with 11 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So you should have a total of 26 stitches in this round. Going on to row number 11, we're going to do seven single crochet, six decreases, and seven single crochet. So here's the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then let's 
start decreasing. One invisible decrease, two decrease, three, four, five, and then six, and now finally seven single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you can start seeing that we're uh, shaping that chin for mini dino. Going on to row number 12, uh, we're gonna do five single crochet, five decreases, and then five single crochet for a total of 15 stitches. So here we go, there's one, two, three, four, and five single crochet. Let's hit up five decreases, one, two, three, four, and then five, and then five single crochet. One, two, three, four, and then five. So there is the head shaped. Going on to round number 13, this is where we'll start doing our first color change. So we're going to do 11 single crochet in your main collar and then four single crochet in your stripe collar. So let me see if I can find the center pull for my new ball of sand dollar. Oh no. Oh yes, maybe. Ugh, how many of y'all can relate to this? This sucks. Ah, okay, okay. Well, my yarn had a child. And there's my yarn end. Ugh. Let me just deal with this off camera. Okay, I got my uh, stripe color situated. <laughs> So round number 13, I'm gonna start with 11 single crochet in my main color. So one, two, up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Before you complete your 11th stitch, you'll want to draw up a loop in your new color. So that way you're ready to make the next four stitches um, your stripe color. So one, two, three, and four. Um, I always hated when patterns like were extra lengthy and they wrote like change color in the next stitch and sometimes I've seen patterns where it wasn't clear where the color change was. So I prefer um, this style of color changing writing where you just tell me what color each stitch needs to be. Like in this row I need 11 uh, main color and 4 stripe color and I will take care of the rest. So then, since I don't need to tuck in any yarn ends, I just tie a dead knot and I cut off my color. And that is the start of our first stripe. The center line of like where our rows are going and our, where our rows are beginning and ending is going to go along mini dino's back. So it'll just, Start here at the head and just go straight down. 
So this is half of the stripe. We gotta complete the next half of the stripe. So for round number 14, you're gonna start with four single crochets in your contrasting color or your stripe color. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And here's my fourth stitch. And I'm just gonna change color again by drawing up a new loop and doing a couple stitches and coming back to uh, tie it in. So round number 14 starts with four single crochet in your stripe color. Then we're going to do seven single crochet in the main color and then finish up the row again with four single crochet in your stripe color. So four single crochet in the stripe, seven in the main, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Change back. One, two, three, and four. And that completes round number 14. So I'm just going to tie off my color change. Okay, we're gonna go on to round 15. I'm just gonna move my um, yarn end or yarn indicator here to keep uh, showing you where the rounds are ending. Okay, so for round number 15, you're gonna start with four single crochet for your contrasting color. One, two, three, and four, finish up that last stitch with your main color. And now we're going to be um, increasing uh, to make the body shape. So first I'm gonna just do one single crochet followed by an increase in my main color. And then I'm just gonna pause here so I can finish tying off this color change. And there we have it. That is our first stripe done. We only have a handful more of color changes, so hang in there. So with the main color, we've just done one single crochet and an increase. Now we're going to do three single crochet. One, two, and three. Then we're gonna do another increase. Increase. Followed by two single crochet. One, two. An increase. And then two single crochet. So now that we've completed round 15, you should have 18 stitches in this round. Um, and I know that was like we had to count to place our increases. Um, I've designed this pattern so that our increases are as symmetrical as, or as symmetric as possible, as symmetrical. Um, Going on now to round number 16, you're gonna start with two single crochet, then do an increase, then four single crochet, a 
another increase. One single crochet, another increase, then you'll do six single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, and six, then one more increase. and then another single crochet. So that's round 16. You should have 22 stitches in this round. Going on to round 17, we're gonna start with one single crochet and then an increase. Now you're gonna do 14 single crochets. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then before you finish up the fourteenth stitch, we're going to do our color change. Now you're going to do five single crochet in your stripe color. One, two, three, four, and five. And you're gonna end round 17 with an increase. So now you should have a total of 24 uh, single crochets in this round. And I'm going to just tie off my color change and cut off my main color. Going on to round number 18, you're going to start with one single crochet uh, still in your contrasting color or your stripe color. You're going to do an increase and five single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and then five. You should see this stripe come out one stitch further than the first stitch. So you see this um, completed stitch is sitting on top of those stitches sitting on the last stitch of the first stripe, this stripe goes out one past. So let me complete my color change here. And I'm going to just do a couple of single crochet. And then I'm going to tie off my color change. Now with your main color, we want to do a total of 10. So I've already done three single crochet. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Changing back to my contrasting color. Now I'm going to do four single crochet, one, two, three, four, increase, and two single crochet. So that's the end of round number 18. You should have 26 stitches in this round, and I'm just going to complete my uh, color change here. And 
going on to round number 19, we're going to do one single crochet followed by an increase and then six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then I'm gonna change this to my main color. You're gonna do 15 single crochet with the main color. I'm just doing three right now so I can finish up this color change. And then now I'll finish up these stitches. So three, three pink ones, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. Now we're going to increase and do two single crochets. So we're still lined up with our where our um, center line is. I'm just going to go ahead and thread out the uh, yarn that I'm using to mark my line here. There we go. So at this point, um, we have completed round 19. I'm going to pause here to place the six millimeter eyes between uh, round seven and eight, around 16, about 16 stitches apart. Um, what I like to do is line up my stripes so that the center line is more obvious. Um, what happens with crochet is that your stitches are slightly spiraling because when they sit, sit on top of each other, they slightly rotate. So I'm kind of eyeballing this. I'm just lining up my stripe and then I'm just determining where my um, center is. And I'm going, okay, this is round one, two, three, four, five six, seven, and eight. I just stick my yarn needle in where I think the center is. And I'm just going to go on that line and go about eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, over. And place my eye here. Actually, I don't think that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, okay, I'm close enough. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Two, four, five. Okay. And then all I'm really looking for is to just make sure that my eyes are on the same line and that they're Kind, they're about the same distance from this first stripe. So this eye, I could probably move it over one stitch. And then now it's about yay far from that stripe. This eye is about the same distance. So as long as you're happy with where your eyes are placed, um, and they're on the same line, then you should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and put my backs onto the eyes now. Oh yeah, that's never coming out. And then the other back. I just kind of Move the eye so that I can get it to the hole and insert the back. 
There we go. So at this point, I'm also going to stuff the head. You don't need to overstuff the head too much. Um, but you want it to be firm. Okay. There we go. And there is our stuffed head. Okay, going on to round 20, we're gonna start with two single crochet followed by an increase. Then you're gonna do 24 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Finally, in that last stitch, you're going to increase. So now, at the end of row 20, you should have 30 stitches. Going on to round 21, we're going to do 21 single crochet in this main collar, and then change collar to do 9 single crochet in your striped collar. So here's 21 stitches. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, and 21. Going to finish up the 21st stitch with my contrasting color. And then I'm gonna do nine single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and nine. So that is the end of round 21. I'm just going to finish off my color change here by tying a dead knot. All right. Going on to round 22. You're gonna start with one single crochet, followed by an increase. Then you're gonna do seven single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. Changing to main color now, with the main color, you'll do 12 single crochet. I'm just gonna get it started by doing three stitches here, and then tying a dead knot to end my color change. Ooh, 
And this third stripe is the last stripe we'll be doing on the body, so do not worry. There's not that many more color changes to go. So we've got three here. Got to do 12, so here's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Finishing up that third stripe. We're gonna do six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then an increase and then two single crochet. So that's the end of round 22. You should have 32 stitches in this round and I am going to tie off my color change here. The nice part about Amigurumi is you really don't have to uh, tuck in your yarn ends. They all get to go inside. So going on to round 23, we're going to do just 10 stitches in our stripe color. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. Then I'm gonna change to my main color so I can do two single crochet, one, two, followed by an increase. And then I'm just gonna pause there so I can tie off this yarn. You won't need the stripe color for the body anymore. You'll still want it for the uh, tail, of course, though. So with the main color, we just did two single crochet and an increase. Now we're going to do six single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, followed by an increase. Now we're gonna do 12 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We are still in line with uh, where our row end is. For round number 24, now we're going to do, start with two single crochet, one, two, followed by an increase. Now we're gonna do 28 single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Now we're gonna do an increase and then two single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32,
one and two. So that's the end of round 24. You should have 36 stitches in this round. Going on to round 25, we're going to begin decreasing our stitches. So we're going to work a pattern here finally. Now it's not too much counting. You're going to do four single crochet followed by a decrease. Do that six times all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, and decrease. And then we're going to do that again. So there's our pattern. One, two, three, four, decrease. One, two, three, four, And then one, two, three, four, decrease, and then one, two, three, four, and decrease. So that gets us to the end of round 25. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and move my line or my yarn marking where my row ends are up just so that you can continue seeing that clearly. Going on to round 26, we're going to uh, do a, the pattern again. We're going to do three single crochet followed by a decrease six times total all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. So one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, one, two, three, and decrease, one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease. Okay, there is round 26 completed. Going on to round 27, same thing, sort of pattern again. You're going to do two single crochet one, two, followed by a decrease all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. All right, there's round 27 complete. I'm gonna pause here to start stuffing the body some more. All 
I try to get my stuffing into the neck and then to squish it into the belly and into the back some more. Okay, and I think that's good enough for now. You can always add more stuffing before we close it off. You don't want to overstuff it, like it should still be squishy, but you don't want to understuff it, then it'll be too flimsy. So we only have two more rounds left for where we're closing it off. For round 28, you're going to do one single crochet in the first stitch, followed by a decrease. And you're going to do that all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. Okay, there is round 28 complete. You should have 12 stitches. All you have left to do now is six decreases for round 29 to close it off. I know this is um, always tricky to decrease. What I recommend doing is if you need to, change your hook grip to get the best angle that you can, and that way you can get into the stitches you want. So like that. Yarn over, pull it through, there's your first decrease. Second decrease. Third decrease. And then fourth decrease. Fifth decrease and then finally our very last decrease before I do that though I think I want to stuff a teeny bit more stuffing in here yeah I'm just using my pinky to squish the stuffing in Okay, that, no, I want a little more stuffing. Stuff it. Okay, okay, now I'm happy. Let me get that last decrease done. Go into the first into the second, drop a loop, yarn over, and pull through. So now I'm just going to cut off my yarn, leaving a bit of a tail. I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to close this up. To close it up, you wanna grab the front loop of each stitch. So you can see this is the stitch um, these are the six stitches you have done in this round. You don't want to grab 
both of them, just the front leg. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Then you can pull it tight. And then I like to just weave in my tail underneath a couple of stitches before tying a knot. Let's see if I can get it in there. Yep, get it underneath. A couple of other stitches, perfect. Then I'm just gonna tie a knot to secure it and then send it back through so that knot is inside. Just like that. And then I usually just use my yarn needle to tuck in the remaining tail. So all of my scraps are inside the piece. All right, so now we have completed the body. Um, that wasn't too bad, that didn't take too long. And uh, we've got our three stripes on the body. Um, and if it helps you to see how crocheting is spiraling, this line is showing you how our first row, or where the, sorry, this is the last stitch of each row, where the last stitch of each row ended up. And um, that's how it spiraled. So, ta-da, set this aside. We'll go and work on the arms, legs, and tail next. Okay, next we're going to make the arms. You're gonna start with a magic ring and do five single crochets into the magic ring. So, one, two, three, four, and five. You're gonna close up the magic ring. For rounds two and three, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, at this point, after completing round two, I will pop it inside out, there we go, and then finish up the third round. One, two, three, four, and then So I'm going to do just a slip stitch in the next stitch and then I'm going to cut leaving a tail and I'm just going to pull this through. We'll use this tail to sew the arm to the dyno, uh, mini dyno, and I like to just use my yarn needle to tuck in the tail from the magic uh, ring into the arm and then that way uh, the arm has a little bit of, um, it's not stuffing because we didn't put any polyester fiber fill stuffing in there, but it feels like it's full. So go ahead and make two of these arms. Okay, there are my two arms completed. I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. Let's start making the feet. You'll start again in the magic ring um, and you'll do six single crochet in the magic ring. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. For round number two, we're going to do six increases to get to a total of 12 stitches. So this is uh, just like the very beginning when we made the head. 
you're just expanding on the magic ring and doing it in multiples of sixes. Okay, so there's the end of round number two. You should have 12 stitches for round number three. In the back loops only, you're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch. So the back loop is this one back here. And you're just gonna go in one single crochet and do that um, one in each stitch all the way around. Doing this row in the back loop gives us a um, line for the foot uh, as you can see with like this mini dyno there's this line here Okay, so there is round two completed. I've done one stitch in each, um, one single crochet in each back loop all the way around. For round number four, you're gonna do one regular single crochet in the next stitch, followed by an increase, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. This just makes the foot um, a little bigger because we, we want to give the mini dyno a little bit of a uh, thighs. And there's round number four complete. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and cut off, leaving myself a tail for sewing. Go ahead and make a second foot and I'll meet you back here. All right, there is uh, the second foot completed. Go ahead and set these aside and we shall go on to making the tail. So the tail is only seven rows, and um, I know if you don't like uh, doing color changes for this short of a thing, what you can do is you can just do this all in one color. I'm gonna show you how to do it with, um, you know, these two stripes on here, but um, if you're having a tough time with the color changes, just do it all in one stripe and I promise your dyno will still be really cute. So taking your stripe color, we're gonna start again with the magic ring and we're gonna do four, I know four, it's a small amount, four single crochet into the magic ring. So one, two, three, and four. You're gonna close this and then what you want to do for round number two is we're going to do one single crochet followed by an increase, one single crochet increase. And that's going to get us to a total of six stitches. And I know it's kind of tricky, but just take it slow and uh, have some uh, patience with yourself and crease in this stitch. And then one single crochet and then increase in this stitch. So at this point, with my last uh, single crochet in the last increase, I'm going to change color to my main uh, body color. And I'm just going to do my first two single crochets of round number three. I'm going to stop here so that I can flip the tail out. There we go. And tie off this color change. So 
So for round number three, oh, you don't want to cut off your color habit. I almost picked up my scissors and cut it off. So don't cut off your other color because we're going to go back and forth between our main color and our stripe color. For round number three in your main color, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch and uh, we still have six stitches in this round. So I've already done two. Here's three, four, five, and six. For round number four, you're gonna do one single crochet followed by an increase, and you're gonna repeat that three times so you have a total of nine stitches. So another single crochet increase, and then our third single crochet in before you complete that last stitch, you're going to grab your stripe color here that you already still have attached and just pull that up. And then we're going to go on to round number five. For round number five, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch for a total of nine stitches. So one, two, there's number three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. For round number six, you're going to do three single crochet one, two, and three, followed by three increases. So increase, increase, and increase, and then finally your last three stitches um, for this round. Before you finish that third stitch, of course you're going to uh, use your main color to finish up the stitch. And then since we're done with the uh, stripe color, what I like to do to change colors is I like to draw up my loop for the next stitch, cut off my um, contrasting color, and then this is where I'll usually just tie it off. I like to draw up the first loop of my next stitch so then that knot sits like at the bottom of where those stitches are. And then we're going to finish up the last row of the tail now. We're on round number seven. We're going to do four single crochets. So there's our first single crochet, second, third, and fourth. Then you're going to do an increase. two regular single crochet, one and two, followed by an increase, and then four single crochet, one, two, three, and four. Slip stitch in the next stitch, and then cut off your yarn, leaving a tail for sewing. And woohoo, we have completed the tail. I would just shove all of your yarn end in. We will still want to stuff the tail a little, but now you have all of your pieces completed. The body, two feet, two arms, and the tail. So all that's left to do is for us to sew it together. Okay, let's start with sewing our little arms on first. I'm just going to thread my yarn needle, and a fast way to thread your needle the way my mom taught me is to take your yarn, use the needle to pinch it small, and when it's pinched between your finger, you can just slide it 
into your yarn needle and pull it through. So go ahead now and line up your arm where you want it. I like to line it up just um, at the second stripe, but one over. And since we only have five stitches in the arm, I just like to point out the five um, holes I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So just one, two, three, four, and five. And those are what I'm just going to start working in to uh, sew it on. So once I put my tail through, I'm just gonna come back into the arm, pick up a loop, go back in to the same hole I came out with and go out a different hole. And more of the same to sew on the arm. Okay, so now that all the stitches are sewed in, I came out a different part of the arm. I'm just gonna go through it one more time and I'm gonna come out somewhere here in the middle of his belly. And I'm gonna leave this yarn tail hanging out. I'm gonna take my yarn needle and start sewing on the other arm. I'm doing the same thing again, figuring out the five holes that I'm going to use. And then I am just going to start sewing it on. And then, ta-da, there's the second arm sewn on. Just gonna go through it and come out the same hole where my other tail is. This way I can tie the tails together, kind of secure them off. And then what I do is I just take my yarn needle thread both of these ends through now that they have a knot in them, go through the same hole, come out somewhere else, and then I just tuck in uh, these tails into the body. You can totally just cut it off. I don't, I don't really know why I like to sit here and shove my yarn tails into the piece, but maybe it's satisfying. But there are our two arms, and um, now let's go on to sewing the tail onto our piece. So I'm going to remove this uh, yarn tail that was marking my um, end of row. To line up the tail, what I do is I count seven stitches of the stripe on this side, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you should have in the center there, five stitches, uh, one, two, three, four, five. What I'm aiming for is for my increases in the last row of the tail right here and right here to sit on top of those five stitches. So this pink row um, is going to be on top of this pink row. We're going to sew that there, but this is where you wanna line it up. So let me just thread my needle here. I like to hold my tail in place and I just go for it. We're gonna start here at the bottom, grab our first stitch and then 
continue over to the next stitch. And actually, yeah, I'm going to go over here. Then come out of that and up the next stitch. Yeah, I think I want to go up there. And I like to make sure I'm pulling the uh, yarn I'm using to sew pretty tight. Oops, and I'm totally squishing the body in a funny shape. Coming up here, grabbing the next stitch, and I'm going up here. Okay, once your tail is mostly sewn on, then I would stuff it a little more. I've still got plenty of room to get my finger under there, so I'm going to go for another stitch or two. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna check that I'm happy with where the tail is lined up. I can't tell you the number of times I've undone my sewing to redo it. And then I'm just gonna get a little bit of stuffing and stick it in here. Probably won't need all of this that I grabbed. And I'm just going to use my pinky to put a strip in there. You don't want to terribly overstuff it, but you want it to be firm so it keeps its shape. Actually, I am going to use all the stuffing. Okay. I like that level of squish. That's good squish. I'm going to come here to do the next stitch. And then I'm almost done sewing on the tail. I just got one more stitch. All right, I got the last stitch there and I've pulled my yarn through somewhere else. I'm just gonna go through the tail one more time and come out here. Same thing as before, I like to just tie a knot and tuck the tail inside. So now we are done sewing on the tail. All that's left to do is to sew on the feet. Okay, tuck that in. And then there we go. On to the feet next. Okay, on to the feet. So I'll thread my yarn needle. What I like to do 
because of the um this uh like where we do the back stitches or not sorry the back stitches the stitches in the back loops since um there's like a break in continuity i like this part of the foot to stay on the inside so on both of my feet i'm gonna start at the center so that this is on the inside and like you see the nice line on the outside i don't like want to do that you know just to keep it looking nice and so i'm going to start with this foot and what i do is i use where we closed it up as my starting point i'm just going to come here so i come out of the uh first part of where we started and then i'm going to go up that stitch and I'm just going to keep going in this direction. Um, I think I just go forward for like a couple more stitches. I'm just generally going towards the uh, nose. So I'll come here, grab my next stitch, come here the next stitch and then what I do to line up the foot is I don't want to sew my foot above two rows of a uh, stripe like I want my foot to stay underneath these two rows so you have the third stripe and then you have these two rows here your foot is going to be sewn into that line and that's like the guideline that I use. So knowing that, I look for like holes that I could go into and um, I, I guess, what, what am I trying to say? I'm trying not to sew this foot too high. So there we go. Now that I've come here, now that I see that I'm in the row that I don't want to go past, now I'm just going to follow the body shape. So that's how I like to sew on the foot. You don't have to do it this way, but I like how it looks and maybe you like how it looks too. Okay, a couple more stitches. And there. Okay, so I'm in a pretty good spot. There's only like four stitches left and I definitely have like four holes that I could work in here. I'm going to stop here and leave this foot. I'm actually gonna go start the other foot. The reason I do this is so that I can um, stuff the two feet as evenly as possible. Um, I don't think I'm like terribly off, but like sometimes I feel like if I do one foot stuff it, then one foot stuff it, that they're not even, even though they like look fine. Maybe I'm just crazy, but at least doing them at the same time, you'll um, you'll get to do it as evenly as possible. Wow, okay. Um, so again, since I am trying to keep this back loop where the circle breaks on the inside, I'm going to sew my foot starting here. So I'm just gonna grab this stitch, I think. Come up here. Up there.
Okay, on this end, I try to just line up this foot like where the back is approximately with this one. So I think I'm gonna go over here. And then these two feet are kind of aligned and I'm using my tail as like a point to align it with as well. And then since I'm here, out coming out of this hole that's two rows underneath the third stripe, I'm just going to start sewing um, across this row now. All right, so there are my two feet uh, sewn on, and now I'm going to take a bit of stuffing, see if I can approximately divide it in half. You don't need a terrible amount of stuffing, and then I just try to ball it up a little bit before I squish it in here. Okay, see that was definitely too much. Okay, and then I just get that stuffing in there. I'm going to take off some here, stuff it into the other foot. And I just kind of try to make sure they're even. I think this foot could use a little more stuff. And maybe this foot, actually. Okay. Okay. That's feeling good. And now I'm just going to close it up. And there we go. Here's the last stitch of that one. I like to go back down and out again because uh, what I'll do is I'll use this yarn end to tie it to this other foot's yarn end. So let's complete this foot now. Then there we go. Back down and out, just so I can see that. Okay. We're almost done. Let's tie off these yarn ends to a dead knot. And 
then tuck the yarn end inside. Wow. So that was a lot, but we did it. Um, after you cut off or tuck in this yarn end, you are all done with mini dino. I just find it really satisfying to tuck in the yarn ends like this. Like, I don't have any trash yarn sitting around. Ah, there we go. You have your dino, the tail, the feet, and the arms sewn on. Here's the front view, the side view, the back view, and the other side view. And so, yay, mini dino. All right. We're all done with mini dino. Oh, this one is so cute. I feel like the stuff I make during a filming a video tutorial turns out so well. Anyways, I hope this turned out well for you too. Um, if you uh, make this and you share a picture on Instagram, please tag me. Uh, my Instagram handle is at mary.marymakes. I would love to see your creations. I just... <sighs> Would love to see the world have more dinosaurs in it, really. Um, if you liked this video tutorial and you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, if you are making these dinos at a fair for sale, uh, all I ask is that you please consider buying me a coffee to support my work. But thank you so much for watching and yay mini dino!